Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and today I want to give an in-depth review and also show some features of the 2021 Toyota Sequoia. So this is one of the last V8 models that Toyota offers for the Sequoia. And I just wanted to talk about a lot of the features, and I am coming from a different SUV, a 2015 Yukon Denali. So I want to talk about some of the things that I first noticed that stood out, some of the things that I think are better, some of the things that maybe aren't as good as it was, and some reasons why I chose one over the other. And so th this one happens to be a Platinum Edition. And the reason why I went with the Platinum is because it was the only way that I found uh, that I could get the DVD player for the kids. And for me, I wanted the heated and cooled seats. I also do like you know, a lot of the door lock uh, systems that I believe the Limited at least came with, maybe some other Sequoias, uh, but I also have a Platinum Tundra. So I'll talk about some of the things that were different among the Tundra and the Sequoia since they're known to be the same drivetrain and pretty much the same thing. One is a truck and one is the SUV. Now they are pretty loud engines and I have another video I'll talk more about uh, fuel economy so check the video description for that but it's the same 5.7 liter and a 6 speed. The 6 speed transmission does leave some to be desired because with an 8 speed or a 10 like most newer trucks do you have more shift points so you don't have to downshift so drastically um, but check the video description for that I won't touch m more on that other than these get about 15 and a half miles per gallon. The main takeaway is that it is a dual overhead cam engine, it's very reliable, and it's really a great engine. So the first thing I want to get into is the DVD player. It's possible that it was an option, but the only ones I could find it in was the Platinum Edition. So the DVD player, the only thing that's a little odd is the DVDs are put in right above it, so it's not done at the front of the vehicle. And the display, you can tell it really wasn't designed to run a DVD player. So it does have a rear option, but on it, all you really have is to play or pause it. There's not really a lot of ways to skip chapters or go back, so play and pause is about all that you do get. Uh, there's ways to lock the rear mode and turn the power on so that it reads the DVD. But it is quite awkward when you're used to being able to put a DVD in up front or have your wife in the passenger seat manage all that to now you have to reach behind you and kind of find where the DVD goes. Now it did come with a remote and so luckily one of my children, five years old, so they're able to at least use that. But uh, if you have this in the front, you're kind of pointing it over your shoulder and trying to get it to work. And so it really is a system that uh, is not done very well, but I am glad that it has it. It does work perfectly without any glitches so far. Uh, but anyway, that was just something that I wanted to mention. But uh, again, the quality is really good and the kids love the DVD player. This one also did come with headphones, and so this was a used vehicle, but it had about 11,000 miles on it, and it had things that had never been opened, so we kind of lucked out on that one. Now, a small thing compared to the Tundra, I really like the Tundra's blue accent lighting for all the buttons and everything. So this is just a small detail, and you'll notice the Tundra also has a trailer brake controller, which we'll uh, get to in a minute. But a lot of the options are identical for the Tundra and the Sequoia here. The mirror control, the automatic dimming headlights, the rear window up and down. The Tundra does have the headlight adjustment where you can scroll up and down and aim your headlights up and down, so that's a nice feature. And these buttons light up all really nice, but if you do notice, there is something that's strange, and that is for the mirrors those ones do not light up. So in the dark when you're trying to unfold the mirror or change the mirrors, I don't know why they didn't make those buttons light up. One thing about the Tundra that drives me crazy is the compass, the arrow just points to which direction you're going. Uh, where the Sequoia is much better because as you're driving, it actually moves the compass headings for you instead of just an arrow pointing south and looking down and it's really confusing. Uh, the Sequoia's, you know, that orange color for all the accents, which isn't bad, uh, but I really do like the blue. Now another feature that I thought was interesting is the Sequoia does have a handle here, but it also comes factory, at least this one, with running boards. On the Tundra, it doesn't have a handle there, so before I added running boards, it was actually a little harder to get into it being a truck. So I thought that was interesting. The steering wheel on the Sequoia feels really nice. I'm really not a fan of the fake wood 
or maybe it is even real wood, but I really like how the Tundra had silver for the Platinum and a just full leather steering wheel, so I do like that a lot better. Now something I noticed immediately that drove me crazy was how small they made these knobs for the radio. I don't know why they made them so small when the Tundra, it's the perfect size, they have a really nice feel to them, same year, I, just, I don't know why they did that. As for the Apple CarPlay, it works really well when you're plugged into a USB and no complaints, everything works great. When you're not and you're just using your phone for connecting to it, it does connect to your phone via Bluetooth, but it is a lot more difficult to use. So every time I plug it directly in and I don't have any problems. So I really do like having the Apple CarPlay, um, but you have to have it plugged in. Uh, down here there's a lot of other auxiliary ports too, so you got plenty of those. Uh, so you can have multiple things plugged in at the same time. And we're in an age where cell phones are everywhere. And so even with these two USB chargers you still have as well a cigarette lighter. If anybody still uses one of those, but some attachments have it. And it is missing things here, and you're, it drives you crazy because you're like, it's the Platinum Edition, so why do I have these patches of an option that looks like you didn't get? Now, a lot of things don't look like they've changed since 2008, and that's how Toyota works, and that's actually a reason in the end of the video while you'll see why I like it so much. Um, so it does look dated. We're talking... A very old panel but the knobs are very nice I like the way that they look I like the way that they move I like the color of the buttons that light up so I don't have any main complaints on it it does its job and it does it efficiently um, so you do have dual climate control I really don't care for that but uh, it's an option I do really like the heated and ventilated seats and they're on a scroll knob now some people might say that's a little odd um, but what I really like is then it stays in that position when you turn the car on and off. Now my Tundra is electric on this part and it actually still does stay where you last left it. So I'm glad they did that. Um, now for the rear, it, the rear air conditioning is really strange. All you can do is control the temperature from the front. So again, on the back of the center console, you're reaching over behind you while you're driving, trying not to look. That's the only way that you can change whether it's coming out floor, top, high speed, low speed fan, everything like that. So that's kind of another strange thing. So with older children, maybe it's not a problem. With younger ones, it is difficult when you need to change the settings and you're driving at the same time. Now in the desert climate, I really loved the cool ventilated seats and I'm pretty sure the only way you get that is in the Platinum. It looked like the uh, Limited and even the TRD just had heated seats, so correct me if I'm wrong there. And then again, that rear one, you can just turn the air conditioning off, but that's all you can really do is that and the temperature. Something else that I thought was odd is on the mirror control, you can choose left or right mirror of which one you want to adjust. But you'll notice if it's in the neutral without one side being pushed, you put the vehicle in reverse, nothing happens. But if one of the mirrors is selected, like the left side or the right side, as soon as you put it in reverse, it actually does shift the mirror to look downward. And both mirrors do it. It doesn't matter if you're right or left. But I just thought it was interesting that that only works when it, the tab is pushed. So maybe that's just an easier way to work around it if you didn't want that option to always be working. It's just something you have to know about or you're like, how come it's working sometimes and not working others? So select left or right and both of the mirrors will automatically look down when you go into reverse. Now being a larger SUV, I really like that you can push this button and it will fold the mirrors in for you. It does it automatically on this one. The only thing that I thought was odd is that button only has power when the vehicle is on so when you turn the vehicle off and you park and you go oh I need to fold my mirrors in and you push the button then nothing will happen so you have to turn it back to accessory at least um, or back on to uh, you know turn the car on either way just get power back on and then it will work I really like how the Platinum Tundra comes with the trailer brake controller and so if you're doing some towing, it's nice to have if you have electronic brakes on your trailer. So I was thinking I would be getting the same thing on the Sequoia, but it actually comes with provisions to wire one in, but it doesn't come with a controller. 
It is nice that they give you both of the connectors. On this side you have the four pin, so that's very useful, and then a separate seven pin so you don't have to get the adapter. So I'm glad they gave us that, as well as a two inch receiver uh, for your tow -a hitch. One of Toyota's signature things is the rear window that rolls up and down, and so I think that's really cool. You don't see a lot of SUVs that do that. The glass usually pops open. Um, so interestingly, if you have the key fob, I think that's where you get these up and down arrows. Otherwise, your key would go in, and I think whichever way you turn it would roll that window up and down. So it is cool to roll this down by the touch of a button. However, you got to think about how the back of the vehicle is where it will be most dirty from grime and rock and everything like that that's on it. So it's kind of like a cringe thing to think about, um, you know, that sound of a dirty window going down. So I really don't like using this unless it's clean. Um, at the store, it is somewhat useful, um, but I did like, you know, how other SUVs you can kind of just pop the, the glass and open it. Now this does have a power lift gate and I'm really happy with it and the main reason why is because the Yukons would come down so hard that it would slam and I'm pretty sure that's what uh, cracks the tail lights. So you'll have to see my videos on replacing or repairing them, but watch how smooth this comes down and locks. It can also be manually opened and closed, so that's nice to be able to just lift it up or pull down on the strap, so it's really not that big. And the motor looks like it's very accessible, and so you just push and hold that button, and uh, I really like the way that it comes down, just quietly latches. It does have a button inside as well that you can push down to open or close the rear hatch. However, you do have to make sure the doors are unlocked. At first I thought, that's odd, it's not really working, but you have to make sure the doors are unlocked. Now sometimes you don't appreciate things until they are broken, and on the Yukon, with those tail lights breaking, I had to fix them. I eventually bought new ones, and they can be expensive, factory ones 800 each, but tail lights, I really like how Toyota has kept them simple. Uh, these ones had these little fins, and I was wondering if on the Tundra if it's the same as what I found on the uh, Sequoia, but what I really loved about the Sequoia is and the first thing I noticed because of the problems I had with the Yukon, the way that these are shaped, when you touch your tail lights at night, you can actually see them light up in your rear view mirrors. So it's something that's so simple that you wouldn't even think twice about, but until you were always worried about having your brake lights not work in the past, then that's something that you appreciate. So when we were driving this off the lot at night, I went, wow, I can actually see the taillights light up when I touch the brakes. I never have to worry whether the taillights are working. Now opening the door, a half pull will unlock it and the second pull will open it all the way or uh, one swoop at the same time will do them both, but you feel that difference and it, at first it almost feels like the door's breaking or something. I really love the JBL sound system in here. It's fantastic. And I do like that they have water bottle holders here in the side that are large enough to hold some of your bigger water bottles that are taller. The front cup holders are also pretty good size and there's even a third one there. And just a little feature here, there's a little light, just a little orange LED light, and you'll notice that comes on with the headlights, and it's just an ambience light, but that's what that is. At first, it looks like there's a hole in there for some reason, and it is nice driving at night to have that illuminate and just give you a, kind of just a mood light for ambience. And so again, orange color for the lights at night. They have a, a good look to them. But back to the cup holders, right? And so in the middle row, since it does have a center console, it has a movable one. So that's nice that you can accommodate different size water bottles. The very far third row also has plenty of uh, room there for cup holders. Uh, the center console is nice on this one, and it actually will slide forward, uh, which the Tundra doesn't do. And there's little cubby spaces here too that you don't quite find on the Tundra. It is different. So inside the center console, it has this really big uh, area here with a moving sliding tray. So that's nice to put some coins or something just up on the top. And then down lower, you can put your wallet and other things. Uh, so it just kind of slides and locks into place. And when you move this out of the way, you can see how deep that is. That is a really big area to put a lot of things. Uh, all that I really saw down in there was a, a cigarette lighter where, you know, on other vehicles they have a USB. This had a very interesting detachable 
um, place for more storage down here. Maybe it's a little more on the hidden side, but it does go under the cup holders, which I thought was kind of odd. You don't want things rolling down in there where it's uh, kind of hard. But when you open up the armrest, it actually has a lot of things here, including a place to put this piece. So if you don't want to just get have it get lost, then it does actually attach here into the side and clip into place. They have made good use of space here with Kleenexes, a place for a pen, a map, I assume is that one, a place for some cards. Uh, so it does have some nice storage, and you just unclip this one and move it back out of the way, and then, sorry, I'm doing this one-handed, it's a little harder. Um, but uh, then you can put it back into place over at center console and, and have a nice clean look. So just another feature that they were using. Now going back to that center row, I don't like that it has the console, I'd rather have a bench again, but I'm a huge advocate for anchors on the seats. And so what I notice is it does have them here on the captain's chairs, which make it a lot easier to plug in your car seat. And on the back side, if you look all the way at the ground, there actually is the anchor for the rear one. It's kind of hidden there, you almost don't see it. Um, but something that I really like is just to plug these car seats in, and check the video description. I have some videos on installing the car seats and some things to look for. Um, but I really like how this has this in place. But I really wish it was on a bench seat instead of captain's chairs just to gain that extra seat in the middle. Now for the back, you don't get any front anchors on any of the seats. And so the only place that they intend a car seat is using the shoulder belt in the middle seat. This comes down from uh, the ceiling and it does not have the anchors on the front that you would plug the car seat in like you saw. And when you go to push this in, be careful or you may never get it back. <laughs> this one fell down in there and I, it was really difficult to get down in there and get that out. So anyway, again, you pull this thing out, you uh, bring it down and you just plug it into uh, the receptacle down here very carefully. And um, so it does have a shoulder belt and you know, you really only needed a lap belt if you have a car seat back there, but it is good that they give you the shoulder belt. And then you can just use this to push in on it and actually release it. So it does uh, release pretty simple when you do pinch that in there. And then this retracts up into the ceiling. Uh, on the Yukon, it would just kind of dangle there. So I think this is a nice way that you just kind of fold this up in here. And so uh, for the middle car seat in the back, there is the anchor. So it's only on the center. You don't have these on the sides. So let's talk about folding the seats down. I do like how these are labeled left and right. And so that's a lot easier than picking a button and hoping you got the right one. They do roll down pretty slow, which isn't a big deal, but just an observation. And when they are flat, it's nice. I have this cover here too. Check the video description because it's a two-piece one, which is really nice, that can cover both areas. Notice as you're putting these back up, if you stop at any time, it really does not like that. So the light lights up, and it beeps at you, and you got to just keep going all the way up or all the way down. Um, now these on the side, these are actually grocery bag holders, is what it says in the manual. I had to look that up. I was wondering what they were. So you can hang grocery bags on that to keep them from sloshing around. And as you fold this down, it's nice that the headrests fold down on their own. And this is a really cool feature. You actually can tilt the seat back with this button here. So you can recline it and give yourself a little bit more room. It's not a the seat's up and you're stuck. And they are pretty spacious back here. It's kind of between a Yukon XL and the regular Yukon that I had. So uh, every row here seems to have these uh, little blinders for the sun which is kind of nice that they have that uh, not just for the middle row but they also have it in the back so they thought of everybody it is typical to have the air conditioning up in the ceiling so that's kind of common but at least they didn't short you on that the tundra pickup truck only has the center console one lots of storage here in the back and again the cup holders that we talked about so plenty of those to go around and the buttons for reclining the seats and uh, so that's nice to have and it does have the provision already here for the anchors to put down a cargo net check the video description as well I have another one on uh, where to pick this up and it's just nice to have to keep cargo from falling out on you but 
Going back to the center console, captain's chairs, again, I would have just rather had a bench with an extra seating, but the Platinums that I found all had the center console, has your switches for the heated seats in the back, so not something that's really too easy just to remove. Um, again, the removable and you know different size water bottles but this center console maybe the kids will enjoy it it does have a lot of space back here to put things uh, and it has a divider that you can change back and forth and also on the back if you open it it flips forward and you have a place to write notes or do something that maybe high executives would do um, but uh, maybe kids can use it as a drawing thing um, more places to, for storage and a really deep center storage so that it is useful space to put all the kids stuff because I don't like it all being just rolling around on the floor getting dirty. I really do like the adjustability on the seat how you can pull the bar up and slide it forward and back and have it incrementally for more leg room for the people behind you and just move it around. It also has um, this little lever to pull forward so you can get into the back pretty easy as long as there's not a car seat and it has this flap that folds down and so if you pull on the chair here it's kind of hard to do it but once you pop it down it actually folds the seat all the way forward until it's flat and then you can undo this little piece here and it flips over and flat so now you have a really long area with those seats folded down so uh, putting these seats up it's nice that it has the switch here. It's an accessible place for it. And so you just push that button again, it beeps at you. Now notice how those seat belts really dug into that uh, seat. I uh, don't know if there's much of a way around that. You've got to really tuck them down. And then uh, this pops back into place. The driver's seat and passenger seat are actually more comfortable than my Platinum Tundra. They were softer. It seemed like the Platinum Tundra's leather is a little more rugged, maybe because it's a truck. And so I didn't see these on the Tundra either. A little fold down, I don't know if you'd call it an ashtray. It doesn't quite fit my wallet in there, uh, but it is a little convenient little cubby to have for something, maybe a gift card or something that you want to carry around. Uh, the buttons for the windows are automatic on the front, so you push it once and it will roll all the way down pull it all the way up and it will roll all the way up on its own. That's kind of normal for this day and age. Um, lock switch and then to uh, keep the back windows locked. And speaking of locks, the child lock is so simple on this. It's inside the door. You flip the switch down, you flip it up. On my last SUV, it was a button up front, which was convenient, but another thing to break and other people mentioned them breaking often. So again, I'm loving the simplicity. Toyota is doing a great job with it. They're not changing a million things and they stick with what works and you really appreciate that after you fix things. The memory seating, the only thing I thought was odd is the car has to basically be on and running for it to set. Uh, then the other things are, you know, you're great to have your dome light, everything on, light up the whole cabin, turn it off, have it come on with the doors, very simple. I'm guessing that this cubby is where the trailer brake controller would go because when you do wire the harness, it's in that kick panel by the driver's side uh, so maybe it goes up into there if you did get a factory one again it does give you the harness for it and that plugs in on the driver's side uh, so maybe that does go up in there or you could get it to go up in there there are some other nice features tow haul which will just change the rpm and shift points for towing you have a center lock and then you have this adjustable height which i really didn't need i'm not too thrilled on uh, it is nice. You push the button up and it will lift the vehicle uh, just slightly, another like inch and a half or so, not much. And I was uh, going off-road and it was nice to have a little extra clearance. But what's uh, interesting is it only uh, works uh, whether you're raising or lowering the vehicle. After going about like seven, eight, nine miles an hour, it will automatically switch back and go back to the regular ride height. So you can put it in low and, and drop it down for getting groceries out of the car. You can put it up on high to get it a little bit higher for going over some small bumps. And there's a manual button for it too. Um, but um, I don't know how useful it is um, unless you really want to be driving slow uh, because it then just kicks it right back to the, the neutral setting as soon as you start driving you know, 10 miles an hour or so. 
For the steering wheel controls, it's pretty common. It has a volume up and down, which I actually would rather have it be up and down for volume. And that's for changing to your next radio station or whatnot, and so it's kind of confusing. Voice commands, the mode changes to XM and all that. Uh, phone. You also have the lane assist and then the parking assist too, or collision avoidance is that one. When you click on that one, it will um, also bring up different pages of information. So you just play around with these and kind of get the idea. It is pretty basic. It just has that center screen in the middle. And so you have eye for information. And as you see, you just kind of scroll through them and it has uh, some different options for you. Uh, so you have a digital speedometer readout and your mileage and range. This one on the left, as you push it, the brightness goes up and down for the gauge cluster. And if you notice, these are like gray colored, like silver colored gauges. They're actually really hard to read if the brightness is all the way down. So you want to have the brightness up all the way just for the contrast of white letters on gray. My Tundra has black on the, on the face and then white letters and it, it appears really nice so I like that a little bit better uh, this is just your different trip meters as you're probably used to see so trip A, trip B and your total mileage on the vehicle uh, so you have your up and down arrows that can control everything in the middle so we'll scroll through these pretty quick just going up and down here you have your distance and some fuel economy uh, your trip that you're currently on, how long it's been uh, your speedometer range left over and then time until rest this is some kind of metric for traveling uh, as you go over I really do like this compass as I talked about earlier because as the vehicle turns uh, it shows the vehicle going and straight and and then the compass itself moves uh, where on the Tundra it's an arrow that just points at a fixed compass uh, so as you go through you have audio you have other vehicle settings uh, so you can just Scroll through these for AM, FM, XM, Bluetooth, uh, the rear, which would be the video, uh, going over to the car symbol. Um, you would have cruise control, lane avoidance, um, you know, information there to keep you driving in the lane. It doesn't physically do that. It just beeps at you. It does put the brakes on automatically if your cruise control is set and you have the adaptive cruise control. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I like to put my brakes on myself. It's kind of weird, especially when you see something coming and there's no way of avoiding it. You kind of turn the... Um, cruise control off just to avoid it uh, but you have your parking sensor sensitivity and noise um, so you just go through each of these this pre-collision avoidance was that one a blind spot monitoring rear cross traffic alert is that one uh, so it'll tell you what they all are uh, vehicle settings again and then at the very bottom meter settings uh, you can also go down to the maintenance reset at the very bottom there for your oil changes um, but you can change brightness for your blind spot monitoring and how loud the volume is. So you just kind of play with these as you do with your car. It's really not too fancy. You go through each of them and before you know it, you kind of know what's going on on each of them. Then you have your temperature, oil readout, and um, you know your normal gauges there. Uh, again, the USB is the best if you're going to plug it into your phone. Uh, when you otherwise have it just set by Bluetooth, it's not very good. Uh, I'll just say that. Um, so other buttons here, uh, the rear parking assist, and I think it's front parking as well. It'll really beep at you and show you with your radar where everything is. And uh, on the turnstock here, you got your parking lots, lights, your headlights, and auto for the daytime running lights. Fog lights is this one on the inside. If you have that one, then your turn signal for left and right. Um, so just kind of your normal stuff there. You have uh, collision or your blind spot monitoring there and your heated mirror. So those are nice to have. And the Platinum Edition from what I saw has the silver roof rack. So that looks really nice. I think I have seen it on other models too. And it has two adjustable uh, supports here. So you just... Uh, uh, turn that knob and you can slide these uh, uh, forward and back. I really do like the rear wing. Uh, the Yukons looked really nice. I'm glad this has that too. As for the rear, uh, this is where you access your um, your jack. So check the video description. I have a video on showing how to change the spare tire and get into all of this. 
And uh, so by pushing this down, this is how you access the rear jack the, and uh, your tire iron and everything here. Something else, just a little side note, is there is a lot of space under here. If you look down in there, I put my gloves way up in there so you can see, but it does open up to the front of the seats where my rags were there, so it is a hollow space. If you put something through there, if you hit the brakes, it could come and roll into your feet. So just a little side note, but hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, please check the video description. I have a full playlist I'm making on this with other videos, and if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. Uh, thanks, guys.